Russell takes the snap, has time, throws it inside. Oh, the, the end zone touchdown! Seahawks to the end zone, going in. He's throwing it back in the end zone. Touchdown! Russell looks, dumps the ball, the duck ball at the five. He is in again. Touchdown! Throws the middle, ball is caught. Turning up Billy Bull, reverse the tackle. Down to the end zone, like 40, 30, 20. They're not going to get him. Dunk on when you are magnificent. Magnificent indeed. Last season, he hauled in 14 touchdowns, which tied for the NFL lead. He's also the Seahawks' three-time single-season leading receiver and a Stanford grad and a native of Gulf Breeze, Florida. Welcome, Doug Baldwin. And Gulf Breeze is in the... Right, right next to Pensacola. It's in the panhandle. Okay. So it's kind of sounds like a small town. It is very small. Well, I tell you, we had Antonio Brown a couple months ago right here, and he was wearing a green velvet with, I believe, some bugs. Uh, they were diamonds. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but you look very nice as well. But you Thank went you. a more um, subdued look. But you look very nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's start off. I want to ask you about your teammate, Marshawn Lynch. Mm -hmm. He announced his retirement, but it became official as he handed in his retirement papers to the league. And you came out and said that you don't think anybody should be wearing his number, number 24. So why did you feel the need to come out and say that? Um, I mean, look, if, if you were in Seattle, you know how important Marshawn Lynch is to our team. Um, he's been the heart and soul since, he, since I've been there. Uh, and he's been our engine on offense. He's been our, our undisputed leader. And so what he means to this locker room, what he means to our team is you, you can't. You can't put a value on it. So to see another person in 24, it's just, we can't, we can't have it. We just can't have it. But, uh, you know, so happy that he got to go on his, uh, out on his own terms, though. Mm -hmm. How do you try to fill that void? You can't. You really can't. You know, it's going to take a collective effort. you got to have guys, uh, you know, Russell and, and the offensive line, the receivers, the running backs that are going to be filling his shoes. we all got to collectively come together and, uh, and fill that void because it's going to be very, very difficult to fill the shoes that Marshawn so, is leaving behind. So throw the ball more. <laughs> well, more trips to Hawaii, right? Hey, you, you said it. You, said it. You, say it. You, did dis no. you did disagree with it, though. Yeah, I disagree with it. What changed? It. Okay, so what changed for you last year? You you took a made a big leap last year. Went over a thousand yards. What changed for you? Was the offense more tailored to you? you had more opportunities. What, what, what explains the big leap? Yeah, I mean, obviously with Marshawn being injured and then Jimmy Graham getting hurt and then Thomas Rawls, who did phenomenal when he was in there, him getting hurt as well, uh, we kind of had to tailor our offense a little bit. And uh, we went more to the passing game, and I benefited. Um, <laughs> but we all, we all played extremely well. We played at a high level. Uh, we were executing perfectly down the stretch. And in the red zone, I got my opportunity to score touchdowns, which you can't ask for anything better than that. We've always talked about your receivers, or heard about your receivers, a pedestrian group. <laughs> yeah, and, and see, you're smiling yeah, I mean, right I now. I going to bring that yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't agree with it because I know how it's hard to get a lot of touch when you have guys that are on the same level, but you really exceeded your level past everybody else. You had close to an elite year. So what do you need to do to continue that to become an elite wide receiver, whether it's with Seattle or somebody else, because, you know, last year your contract? Well, it depends on how you look at it. You know, um, for us in Seattle, I think the mindset of the receivers is that we're going to do anything that we have to do in order for our team to win. And whether that's catching passes or if that's going down and cracking the safety so that Marshawn or Thomas Rawls can bounce to the outside and get an explosive run. So for us, it's not about making the catches. It's not about uh, getting the touchdowns. It's about doing whatever we're called to do. And, uh, and if that says that I'm going to make 14 touchdowns again, then I'll do that again. How vindicated were you that that moniker not only left you, but also Russell Wilson, system quarterback? He played at an elite level last year. How much were you guys vindicated to say, hey, we weren't just about Marshawn Lynch. We saw, everybody saw what we could do. I mean, there was, there was some part of that. I'd be lying to you if I said that we didn't feel some type of, uh, of resolve with that. But... At the end of the day, we're there to win football games, you know, and, and that's our mentality, that's our mindset. I know it, it may sound like the PC answer, but that's, that's the truth. We want to win championships, um, and so it, that's what it comes down to. We're really not thinking about that too much. What kind of progress are you making with your contract? I know you're in the last year of it. So basically, what can we do here to get you paid, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? There's a lot of people that watch this show, Doug. So I think George is trying to be your agent, to be no, honest no, no. with I don't you. Need to, I don't need to cut. I, I think he's really good. I think Absolutely. he's great. He's, he's great for us here in the media. He, he's certainly not shy. So what can we do to help you? Because you always help us. You know what? I appreciate that. I, <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> You know, honestly, I'm not even thinking about it right now. I'm enjoying my time with my teammates in, in, our, in our training camps right now and, and, and the things that we're doing off the field as well. I'm having fun, you know, so when that, that all, that's going to come to the table soon. And when it does, you know, we'll handle it when it gets there. You expect to be paid like a number one receiver? Uh, you know, I would like to, um, 
But at the end of the day, it's a business, right? So um, I'll let my agent and, and John Snyder handle that. You don't want to talk about where you're going, then let me ask you about where you've been. Gulf Breeze, Florida, mm -hmm. to Stanford. First of all, why Stanford? I mean, what'd you score on the SAT? You, uh, yeah, they don't make exceptions. <laughs> no, right? they don't. He's getting personal Stanford. now. Yeah. <laughs> it was the only D1 school to recruit me. So really? I really had no choice. Stanford? Yeah, I actually wanted to stay home. I, I got uh, recruited by Louisiana Lafayette, um, and, and I wanted to stay closer to home because I'm so close to my family, but my mom, she wouldn't let me pass up on Stanford, so. It's not a bad, course. Stanford's not a bad backup. Yeah. <laughs> That's unbelievable that Stanford was the only school that recruited you, nobody else. The Raging Cajuns are mad right now watching first day. <laughs> but, That's yeah, why the coach is no longer there. Doug, staying on your background, I, I find it fascinating. You're an undrafted free agent. I mean, we've read stories about Tony Romo. I have a friend, Larry Izzo, that tells stories about that moment that Jimmy Johnson or Bill Parcells comes in and says, you're the guy, you're gonna be on our team. When was it you knew? I'm going to be a, be a Seattle Seahawk. I've beaten the odds here. It, it took a while because that, the, the draft, my draft class was the lockout year. So after the draft, none of the coaches, none of the GMs, they couldn't talk to the, uh, the undrafted guys. So I had to wait about a month and a half. Um, John Snyder called me up and said that they're interested. They want me to come in. He actually wrote me a handwritten letter. I still got that in my email today. So uh, wow. That's awesome. It was then I knew that uh, Seattle was most likely the place I was going to go. And, of course, my... But uh, even at that, there were still long odds to make the team. There was, but I mean, it would have been long odds anywhere I went. So uh, I would say the, the, the real push was that Richard Sherman was over there, my good friend. Uh, obviously, we went to, to college together, so he was vouching for me, telling John Snyder that I would be able to make the team. So, what, you know, what kind of receiver was he? Because he talks all the time that <laughs> played wide receiver at Stanford. And we played wide receiver in college, both of us. We always had a saying about D-backs when they would drop a ball, say, if you have better hands, you'd be over here. Right. So what kind of right. receiver was he at Stanford? Well... <sighs> Look at you be measured. Oh, I like man. it. You know, I mean, he's a good friend of mine, so I don't want to hurt his feelings. This is a circle of trust. You're in a safe well, space. Yeah, yeah, so. this is, if this is a safe place, then I'll let you guys know the truth. Okay. He, he would, if he was here, he would tell you that he was, you know, one of the All-American this and, and would have been All-American, All-Pro this if he was stayed a receiver, but he was awful. <laughs> Really? He was terrible. But, hey, he, he's making a living for himself no on the side of the ball. So. What is no it about him? Is there something that you guys, like, get on him about? Like, I heard him do an interview here recently at ESPN on ESPN Radio on the Dan Levitard Show. And he's big into, like, Pokemon. Uh, do you guys get on him for... He's kind of a little bit of, a, of, of an introvert at times, even though he's so out there. Um, because he's, he's into, like, nerdy stuff, it feels like. It's kind of weird and cool. Yeah, no, I, I can't really pick on him too much about that because we partake in the same things. So, uh, no, I mean, it's... It lets you know that he's not just about football. Yeah. I mean, right. yeah, he is all about football. He's all in in football, but he's got so much more to him than just being a football player. Uh, the human being side of him is, uh, is, is vastly interesting, I should say. I feel like we want, it, we want more stories, so we're going to keep you around. <laughs> yeah. Doug is going to stay with us right here on First Take. We'll talk more football and some of the other top stories throughout the league, including Sam Bradford and also Andrew Luck. Be prepared. <laughs> oh, he's prepared. I know he There's is. There's no doubt about that. He's ready to fire away hot takes at the debate. Desk. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to be on. Back here with us on First Take. So just continuing our conversation, I wanted to ask you this. And you mentioned in the last segment that Stanford was the only school that recruited you. And there's so many players that want to make that leap from high school all the way to the pros. How do you think your experience at Stanford prepared you for life in the National Football League? Yeah, just the fact that it was a culture shock going from the East Coast to the West Coast, you know, a little small town Southern boy um, going out to this fast pace, uh, whatever you want to call it on the West <laughs> Coast. Um, I think it definitely prepared me for the NFL because it got my mind thinking about different opportunities, how to approach different people, how to handle different relationships, um, and, and basically how to be a better teammate. And so uh, I would definitely say that, that Stanford's experience, more so than education, has taught me a lot about how to be a better person in the locker room. You've had two coaches that can be stubborn and headstrong, Pete Carroll now. Jim Harbaugh back then at Stanford. A lot of people tried to compare the two. What was it like being around those two guys presently in Seattle and in the past when Jim Harbaugh coached you at Stanford? Well, they're very similar in some ways, but they are vastly different in a lot of ways. Um, I would say that their football knowledge, their passion for the game of football is it's at a different level, you know, especially to be a coach. You know, you guys see Pete Carroll running around on the practice field, jumping around like he's 30 <laughs> years old, you know. And, but yet, he's got a knee replacement, you know. And, and same thing with Jim Harbaugh, sleeping at guys at recruits' houses and stuff. And, right. Um, the things that he does, and 
it's phenomenal to have a coach that's that passionate about football, you know, especially when you have players who are also that passionate about it. And so, um, they, but their styles are different. I, and I'll just say that. Yeah, well, how, how real was their beef, though? Um, <laughs> I, that, that, you know what? You may not have to say anything else, to be honest. Check. No, no comment. <laughs> the laugh said it all. Points. <laughs> let's stay on the topic of Stanford. And speaking of Stanford, let's talk about Andrew Luck. So, as you probably know, the NFL Network released their top 100 players for 2016. And um, the players vote, which you said you did not vote for this, right? Oh, you know, NFL Network didn't approach me about it. Oh, well, maybe they mm. will next year. Never voted. Ever voted? I think we voted maybe my first year or second year. Okay. Okay. All right, so Andrew Luck, he was out of 100, ranked 92, and he dropped 85 spots. I saw that. I saw How do you feel about that? Um, you know, I think there was, there's some warrant to it because of the fact that he, had, he dealt with some injuries. Um, you know, he, he turned the ball over uh, several times. But at the end of the day, I think uh, Andrew, the, the mindset that he has, He'll be perfectly fine. He, he's going to come back from it, from the injuries, from the turnovers, and he's going to correct it, and it'll be perfectly fine. Is Sam Bradford a coward? <laughs> uh, I would never say that publicly. I would never say that to the media. Is he a coward? Um, I don't know. I don't know the whole story. You know, um, I would say that this is a business, right? The NFL is a business, and you got to make the best of your opportunities while you're while you're in the business. So, um, is he a coward? I, I can't say that. I don't know Sam Brad Bradford personally. Is it weird though that I mean, you guys compete at every position in training camp and and in general um, at the quarterback? That generally isn't the case, though. You guys dealt with it with Matt. And, uh, and Russell, obviously, early on. Um, I, is that something that you kind of, as, as players, almost hold against quarterbacks a little bit? Like, oh, you guys are in the red jerseys. You don't have to compete as much. Is there that in the locker room? Is that pervasive? I wouldn't say it's just in, you know, in our locker room. No, I in think general. In yeah. general, yeah. I would say in general. You know, the, the, the quarterbacks, they are protected. Um, but they are one of the most important positions on the team. So it's understandable. But, you know, when it comes to the situation with Sam and other quarterbacks, uh, again, it's a business, you know, they only have a, 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 a small window of opportunity for them to, to excel at their craft, and especially at the quarterback position. There's only one quarterback on the field at a time. So uh, it's very difficult for those guys to get the opportunities that they, that they need to, to excel. Well, let me ask you this, Doug. You, uh, your contract's up in a year. Could you, we understand Sam's not holding out for a contract right now. I guess he's holding out for a better situation to be traded toward. With $22 million in his back pocket. Right. Can you imagine a situation where you would hold out? No, not at all. Uh, it's just not in my, that's not in my vocabulary. I'm not going to hold out. Uh, just because I know that there's guys that I've been sweating with and, and training with, those guys want me there, and I'm going to be there for them, regardless of what's happening on the business side of it, because I think that if I'm, if I'm there with my teammates, all this stuff will play out, and it'll, it'll be fine. Well, how much do you look at that when you see a guy that's got $22 million guaranteed and wants a better situation? Because Marshawn Lynch held out, but... Everybody knew he was going to be in camp. He wasn't holding out just because he didn't want to be there. So when you look at a guy like that, where you got that $22 million guarantee and you don't want to be there, what goes through your mind when you see that situation? Well, Freddie, first and foremost, you said, what do I see when I look at it? And honestly, I don't look at it. That ain't got nothing to do with me. That's none of my business. Mm -hmm. so okay. That's Sam Bradford's situation. I know you guys are supposed to do that. That's, you know, that's your job. But I'm up here as a guest. <laughs> nice. Uh, well, well said. That's between you all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? so, I, and I wish him the best. Yeah. Doug, have you talked to Marshawn in terms of what he plans on doing next and where his mindset is right now? Hey, Marshawn's just going to have fun. Marshawn's going to be Marshawn. Um, you know, he's, he's still highly involved in, in the city of Oakland, in the community of mm -hmm. Oakland, doing so many different things. He's going to Brazil, teaching football, doing so many different things, you know, and uh, he's having fun. He's enjoying his life. Again, mm -hmm. I'm so happy that he got to go out on his, on his own terms. And we were talking during the break that you mentioned that if you didn't have football, you would actually maybe go back and get your master's and think about teaching. With all the information coming out about the safety of football and the CTE stuff, do you ever think about that? Because you have a great degree from Stanford. I mean, do you ever think about possibly ending your career on a shorter end? No, I mean, again, this is you got such a short window of opportunity to play football. You got to you got to capitalize on it. So we all know the risk going into it. We all know that there's going to be it's a hundred percent injury rate, right? Um, we know that. So yeah, obviously you think about it in, in in terms of your future and your family and your your future kids, but at the same time. You know, we're trying to set up a legacy. So that's, that's what's important right now. So that's what I'm going to focus on right now. All right, Doug, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Have fun here at Absolutely. ESPN.